In this After Effects tutorial, we are going to easily add overshoot and bounce to our animations, which will make them go from bad to okay. We will be using the Motion 3 extension, so if you're not familiar with Motion 3, you can check out my overview video where I go over all of the features in this wonderful tool. There are links and discounts for Motion 3 in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we have all of these shapes set up that we want to add our overshoot to. So all we're going to do is, let's say we want to add it to the scale here. I'm just going to open up a scale property, make a keyframe here. Let's go ahead, let's say 10 frames, make a keyframe there. They're gonna scale up to 100%. I'm gonna go back to zero, make them all go down to zero. So this is gonna be the scale up. And now the important thing is for both excite or how I have it bounce, jump, bounce, I always get it mixed up. Um, these work on linear keyframes. So it's not gonna work on anything that's eased, only linear keyframes that look like this. So now let's just grab all of these linear keyframes here doesn't matter which ones you select on the timeline, it's gonna to apply to all linear keyframes on the timeline. And let's click Excite. Where is Excite? A, B, C, D, E, F, E, there you are, Excite. Okay, so now we're gonna get this Excite, very Excite animation, and we play it. And right off the bat, I think the default settings are a little bit aggressive. So let's open up our effects controls up here, open this up and see what we got. So on the one we have selected, let's take a look. So we have overshoot, bounce, and friction. So the overshoot is gonna be how much this first overshoots right off the bat here. Bounce is gonna be the number of times or the amount that it bounces and the friction is going to be the friction, I don't think I, uh, I just explained it using the words that are here. So let's try to do a better job of this. So friction is gonna be like the pushback on it, right? So what I wanna do is if I want this to be, if I wanted this to make bigger shapes every time that it bounces, I want a bigger overshoot amount. If I want more bounces, I want to change this number. And if I want the bouncing to end quicker or go on longer then I change the friction amount. There, that's better. So usually what I do is I um, keep the overshoot around this amount or maybe lower it a little bit and then drop these numbers a lot. Let's say 10 and 10. And then that's usually pretty good. Something like that feels a lot better to me. And then what I can do is I can just copy this and then paste it to the other layers. And I don't think there's a quicker way to do this as of yet. Maybe that'll come in an update and then we can see how that feels. And I think that's pretty good for right now. I mean, I don't know what this animation is anyway. And then, you know, we can do this for other properties too. So let's say I want to do this on a rotation. I could, you know, just do rotation the same amount. So if I wanted to rotate, start the rotation down and then also add an excite we'll get the same thing, right? Keep it in line with the same um, numbers and it should feel good also. Like that. But there's also a different way that you could add multiple excites to one layer. So if I delete this rotation off by undoing, 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 undoing. What I could do too is I could just link my rotation to the scale here. So if I have the scale going up, I could just pick whip this rotation to the scale. So if I open up my scale by clicking S and then shift and click R, and then I have both open and this has an expression on it left over for some reason by accident. So I'm just going to alt click that away, make sure everything's gone here. Now I can just pick whip this to the scale and now these are linked together. So they both have the same overshoot. So if I kind of change the settings on this, you can see it's also changing the settings on the rotation. They are linked together, but I can't now change anything on the rotation. 
because they are linked together eternally. So what I can do here is if I open up this expression, I can just add a little something to the beginning or the end. I'll do it to the beginning, value plus, and then leave everything else. And now this will take the value of this layer and I can just kind of spin it back into position like that, cool. And maybe I'll go ahead and right click, copy this expression and paste it on the other layers like that. And let's stagger all these, why not? And now we have a nice little staggered, whatever this is. And then one more thing here. So like we said, this doesn't work on eased keyframes. So if I was to make this scale change from here to here like this and ease these, we would not get this um, overshoot happening here. But if I was to make another linear keyframe animation, we would get another um, overshoot happening. But if I don't want that, let's say I don't want any animation happening again on later later on in the animation, we have a keyframeable we have a keyframeable enable property. So I could turn this on here, right? I could turn on uh, enable up here. Doesn't really matter where it starts. And then I can just turn it off down here. Uncheck it. Now this, these are hold keyframes, so they just are binary on and off. And now, so it's gonna happen in the beginning and then it's gonna turn off down here. So it's just gonna disable this um, excite property wherever I want. And then I could turn it on again later on in the timeline. So that is excite in a nutshell. Let's move on to jump. Now jump, bounce, whatever you wanna call it, has um, pretty much the same idea. We're gonna take all of our shapes in their kind of final position here. So once they've hit the ground, I take all these, I'm going to make a position keyframe like this. And let's say it's at 10 seconds is where they land. So I'll go to 10 seconds. That's where the position keyframe is. And I'm gonna go to the beginning and I'm just gonna drag them off screen like that. So they just come in and they hit the ground. And then I'll grab these keyframes and you know, you can grab all of them, it doesn't really matter. And we are going to add jump to it like this. And now the jump keyframe, like the excite one is like comically huge. So they're gonna jump way off screen and then take a while to land back in. So let us fix that so they do not jump so high. All right, so we have stretch gravity max jumps. Uh, let me try to explain this again. So stretch is like the height that it's going to jump up. Gravity is, do I need to explain gravity? Gravity is like the force that pulls things to the earth. Um, that's like science stuff. And max jumps is going to be the number of times that it jumps. So right now we have eight times. I like to keep it at two or three. It's just gonna be the number of times that it bounces. All right. So let's bring this down to like 30 for stretch. So the more stretch, the higher it jumps. So I usually want this to be less stretch so it doesn't jump so dang high. Gravity, I want it to be a little bit higher, maybe nine gravities. Earth is 10 gravities, that's according to NASA. And then max jump we'll put at three. And I'm gonna copy this, we'll put it on all of these. Okay, and maybe this will look good. Cool. I think that's, that's fine for right now. Cool. So, and then, you know, to make this a good little animation, you would like stagger these keyframes a bit so they're not all the same. You would stagger the layers a little bit. So it's just kind of like, like that. Maybe change up the properties a little bit. But I got some more tricks to show you first, okay? So we're gonna, we're actually gonna take it a step back here, okay? So on a jump, you know, things don't really, they don't just come down straight like that. Like they're not just gonna come down straight and hit the ground and bounce perfectly back up, right? So sometimes there's gonna be a little bit of rotation that happening that happens. And I don't wanna just add a, another jump 
to the rotation. It doesn't quite work like that. So I wanna link this stuff together. So in order to do that, what I need to do is I need to separate the dimensions here. Um, but if I do that, this whole thing is gonna get a little bit uh, screwed up. So let me delete this all off. Let me hit the trash can here, trash this up, or click the click uh, delete this off the effect controls, and then trash can this. There we go. And now I'm going to right click separate dimensions. And now we're only worried about the Y position. I can just delete the X. Y is vertical. Cool. So now let me re-add the jump to this. Where is it? Where are you? Jump. Great. So now we have jump on just our Y position. Because remember, you can add this, you, you can add these these uh tools to anything. It doesn't care what it is, what it's jumping. It's just jump in the Y position now. So what did we have before? 30. Nine, three, great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link, like we did before, link our rotation to this Y position. Grab this pick whip, link it to the Y, like this. And you know, this is crazy, let's fix this up. So like we did before, let's twirl this down to the beginning, let's add value plus and see what that looks like. And still too crazy, but we, we can twirl it into position. But this is us, it's spinning too much. So we maybe we can fix it with a little bit of math. I'm no mathlete, but maybe if we'd like divide this by 10, so it's spinning 10 times less, maybe that will be good. And let's just see. So this comes down. And like, that's kind of cool, right? So every time it goes up, it spins it a little bit proportionately to how much it's going up and the easing is right with it. And I feel like that's kind of cool. So yeah, maybe I'll do that to this square here too in in fast motion and see if it looks good and, and stagger them. I feel like that will feel kind of good. Cool. And maybe I want this one to be like, flipping the opposite direction, opposite day style. So I'll just put all this stuff in a parentheses and then put a little negative sign like that. Now it's just gonna be a little bit opposite. And then we'll just stagger everything for good measure. Just get a little stagger in your life. If anything is not looking good, just stagger it. And then it looks good, pro tip. And then look at that, look at that. That's great. He's not rotated right. Let's just fix him. I know it's just a tutorial, but I can't have this. And there we go. A nice, beautiful bounce animation. We made it with just a few clicks easily. So if you like this video, give it a like. And for the love of God, please subscribe to me. It's one of like 13 things I actually care about in life. And leave me a comment. Let me know which tool you want to see me dive into next. And like always, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.